Welcome back to Cultivating Cadence, the video series slash hopefully one day podcast series. Um, today we are going to talk about reasons you might not be showing up authentically, either in your personal life or your online digital life and how you can fix it. Um, it's similar to integrity in like matching like what we do with who we say we are and what we say, etc. But it's really about living in alignment with yourselves, with your beliefs and your values and personality and putting that out there in your personal lives and in your online life. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, when we think about showing up authentically, if we think about showing up with genuineness and self-awareness and we think about vulnerability and consistency, right? We think of being bold and confident and grounded in who we are and how we present ourselves to the world around us, right? And when it comes to being a mom and showing up in online spaces or in other spaces, or it comes to being a female creative, like an artist, an author, a musician, etc., and showing up in these spaces as well, putting your art out there, it can be a struggle sometimes to show up authentically, to show people some of the behind the scenes work or to show people the deepest parts of ourselves. Um, this is especially true for creatives when we're trying to share um, our art, right? And... Um, I'll be linking an article that talks about what it truly means to be authentic. And we're going to talk about it in a way that's slightly different from this article. Um, but it's a Psychology Today article. It was a very good read. We're going to talk about authenticity as in showing up in the fullness of who you are and, and letting people in into that world. Um, and that is what we are going to talk about today. Um and what causes us to hold back or to not show up in that way? What causes us to not show up authentically in online spaces or even in our personal lives? What holds us back? And some, some common causes of not showing up authentically are things like imposter syndrome and burnout and fear of judgment and rejection identity struggles, negativity, comparison, um, and even things like people pleasing and societal expectations that cause like perfectionism or fitting into certain boxes that can hold us back from showing up authentically. And, um, so, um, I want to talk about each of these individually and talk about ways like to navigate this because we want to, be able to show up authentically in our lives and online and, and dictate what we share when we share it. That's not um, being inauthentic. That's just choosing our boundaries, which we're going to talk about in a second. But one of them is imposter syndrome. I have a blog post and a video from last week where I talked about imposter syndrome, what it is, how we can overcome it. And it's hard to show up authentically when we feel like an imposter, when we feel as if we don't belong in the rooms or the spaces that we're in we find ourselves like not showing up authentically or holding ourselves back or even like over committing and over structuring ourselves and overdoing it, which isn't authentic because, um, it's beyond what we would typically do if that makes sense. Um, and so that can keep us from being authentic. Um, Another one is burnout. So I am running a burnout reset soon. Um, there will be a link in the description box of this video about it. Um, but it's going to be a three-day workshop where we do a total burnout reset. But when we are burnt out, it's so hard to keep showing up and putting ourselves out there. We want to withdraw. We want to pull back. We are exhausted and overwhelmed when we're burnt out. And so often in this case, we either put a mask on so that people don't know we're burnt out or we don't show up at all, which is typically my case. I typically pull so far back when I'm burnt out um, that I just don't show up at all. I don't even bother to put on a mask. I just, I just, I, I don't show up. So that's one thing. 
Um, another one is the fear of judgment or rejection. It's really hard to know how others will perceive us. And some of us don't even want to be perceived by other people. I know that I go through times where I'm like, I don't even want to be perceived. Like I don't, I don't want to be perceived. Um, and so putting ourselves out there when we have this fear and the unknown makes us put on a mask. We'll put on a mask of what we think people will accept. We put on a mask that we think people will be okay with. And so when we fear that judgment and rejection, we just want to put out what others want to see. Another thing is identity struggles. If we don't know ourselves, if we are not self-aware, if we don't know our values, if we, if we are unsure of these things, it's really hard to put an authentic self out there because we are not completely sure of what this authentic self is. And sometimes in a moment, that's actually authentically you. When you say, I really don't know who I am right now, so I'm figuring it out. I'm trying this thing to figure it out. I'm doing that thing to figure it out. That in the moment is authenticity. But when we struggle to know who we are at the root, we struggle to be authentic. And one of the best ways to begin to be authentic is getting to know ourselves. And also on the reverse of that, being authentic and putting that thing, that stuff out there, like I just said, it can have a drastic effect on us actually knowing ourselves when we do those things that we're like trying to figure it out. It has a drastic effect on us knowing, loving and accepting ourselves. Then there's negativity. When we receive criticism or trolling on the internet or when someone does judge us for who we are, what we show the world, etc., we tend to pull back. We tend to put those masks back on and be like, nope, not here. I'm, that's not me. I'm not doing that. And when we um, experience that negativity, it's hard to be authentic. It's hard to let people in because we don't have our community of people that are like, yes, I love you just as you are. It's fine. Don't listen to these people, right? So that's one more. Comparison is the last one we're going to talk about. When we get caught up in the comparison game, we are tempted to be like others instead of showing up as ourselves. We want to put on the same persona that is succeeding for other people or being accepted by other people. Um, This is where that people pleasing and societal expectation comes in. We compare ourselves to what someone else has. And so how do we become more authentic? How do we show up more authentically? In each of these, I kind of talked a little bit about how we could do that for that particular thing, but some ways that we really start to become more authentic and show up in our personal lives and online and our work lives is self-reflection, getting to know ourselves, getting to know what we like, what we don't like, who we are, what our values are, what we want for our families, what we want for our futures. When we do that self-reflection, we can start to show up with that. Um, And building confidence around that, building confidence around who we are, building self-esteem around who we are and being like, yeah, this is me. This is how I'm going to show up in the world and I will find my people. And if you're not my people, that's fine. You don't have to be my people, but um, I can find my people, but only if I show up and they see me. Um, Another thing is setting boundaries. So when we One of the boundaries we set around authenticity is how much are we going to show people and when and what are we going to show? So it's really good to not show just the good things online. It's really good to show the struggles and to show those things that connect. But we get to choose which of those things we show. And that doesn't make us inauthentic. That just means we are setting boundaries. And really setting boundaries around your relationships, setting boundaries around your work, setting boundaries around your time. All of this helps us show up more authentically. For the most part, I don't post on social media or do anything like that on Sundays. Not on my personal ones, not on my business ones. Occasionally I will, like this week I did uh, because I had something to share. But normally I don't. And that's one of the boundaries I set. That doesn't mean I'm being inauthentic. That's actually a really big mark of authenticity for me. Sundays are a day that I go to church with my family if I'm feeling well enough and I spend time with them and we do family things and we prepare for the week ahead. I don't do social media those days. I barely even get on to interact with people on Sundays. Um, And that is a boundary I've set. 
And that helps me show up authentically. So if someone's like, hey, you have to, you have to post every day or interact every day, I can be like, well, that's not really good for my business. That's not good for me and my mental health and my family health. So I'm not going to do it. And so setting boundaries, exploring our values. This is like self-awareness, self-reflection, but knowing our values, knowing what we stand for, what we want to be a part of, knowing um, what we think is important in this life, doing that is going to help us show up authentically. Um, Embracing our imperfections. When we can look at the things about ourselves that are not perfect or not like everybody else or things that we see as weaknesses or or if we see it as um a flaw when we embrace those things when we say okay this is a thing I don't love it but it's a part of me um we can start to show up authentically that doesn't mean those things don't necessarily have to change. Like maybe we do have a flaw that we want to change. It's okay to say, this is something about me that that is a thing right now, but I'm going to work on it, but I am actively working on it. For example, I don't love being this size. Um, I am actively trying to change that because of the health impacts. That's not to say size impacts everybody's health, but it certainly has effect on mine when it comes to my chronic illnesses my disabilities, my mental health. So knowing that I can authentically say, I appreciate this body, this one that I have right now, this one that is speaking to you. I appreciate this body size and all, but I'm not going to let it stay that way. So you're going to see me show up and have bad days where I don't do the things I'm supposed to. You're also going to see me show up where I look different or I, um, am doing the things I'm supposed to do, etc. All of that is authentic, but I'm still embracing the imperfection. I'm still saying, hey, this is something about me that I might see as a flaw or I might see as like not the best for me, but this is what I have and I appreciate it and I appreciate and love what it does for me, but I am also not going to leave it that way. Um, the next thing is celebrating our uniqueness and all the little victories. When we celebrate our uniqueness and our little victories, um, we start to gain gratitude and appreciation. And when we are grateful and appreciative of our lives, of ourselves, of our circumstances, or when we recognize that these things suck, but we're working to change them and we have hope and grit and resilience, we begin to show up more authentically. Um, The last thing is going back to setting boundaries, removing ourselves when needed. This is true in real life, in social media. When we need to remove ourselves for ourselves, doing so is going to help us come back with authenticity. Um, And then the last thing is connecting with others in genuineness and not comparison. When we look at someone and say, oh, I'm so proud of her for X, Y, Z. Instead of like, oh man, I am not good enough to do X, Y, Z, we start to show up with authenticity. Or even if we're like, man, I saw this person do X, Y, Z, and I really wish I could do that, but this is my obstacle. This is what's holding me back. This is how I'm going to try to get there, etc. We stop the comparison and we start genuinely connecting with other people. So the last little bit is if someone relates to all this, how can coaching and or therapy help in this? Well, they help with self-reflection. They help with regaining balance in life. They help with practical strategies and skills, especially coaching. Coaching is super focused on practical skills and strategies. And it's focused on creative exploration and creative confidence building in yourself. So if someone relates to all of this, this is one of the reasons I do what I do. It's so important for moms and women in general to prioritize, make time for, and maintain their mental health. Um, And it can include um, showing up in the world authentically. Respecting our mental health can include this authenticity that we're talking about. Um, And as a mental wellness coach for women, I focus on things like communication and boundaries, resilience and role fatigue, 
that's where that imposter syndrome and burnout come out. I focus on identity and confidence and deconstruction and reconstruction of faith. All of that impacts our ability to show up creatively. And I help my clients show up authentically in their personal lives, their work lives, their online lives. And the big goal is to help the clients that I work with find their ways to a peaceful, fulfilled life just where they are, as they are, with acceptance, with navigating the burnout, with overcoming the imposter syndrome, with all of that. So if you relate to this today, let me know in the comments below. Let me know your experience with showing up authentically. What has held you back before? Let's talk about it. Um, and I hope to see you soon. Um, yeah, so I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.